All right. We got a new update for H3VR this week, and uh, it's pretty much the end of the month, uh, at least in some people's areas, the 31st, right? So basically the last day for shotguns, and we got some shotguns. Oh, look at these. Uh, and of course, I added some stuff there, but we'll talk about that when we get there. So let's check out the new stuff here. All right, first off, I want to mess with the jackhammer because this has been a long time coming. Remember, Anton showed this off in a um, in a uh, Twitch stream, devel uh, a developer stream. He was developing the game, and he showed off some of the uh, more uh, unique shotguns he had. You just go three meters here. And uh, this was one of them. I think that was like two years ago, maybe one. Uh, I don't remember exactly. It's been that long, but now we've got the jackhammer, the Pancor jackhammer, which is um, pretty cool. Oh, it's got a rail up here. You can put stuff in there. Let's, uh, let's take a mag in here. Ooh. So what do we need to do? All right, safety off. I think you should just fire. Got that revolver code in there, which is a uh, pretty uh, unusual. But then you can remove the magazine. Also remove the sh uh, the empty shell casings or shotgun uh, shells from the uh, chambers here. In the uh... <laughs> that is pretty cool. Uh, it's too bad he couldn't get the whole like anti-mine thing to work, but I, if I remember correctly, I think that's a separate attachment that you put on and then you stick on the ground or whatever, but yeah, whatever. It's good enough that we get a, a Pancor jackhammer in the game. But yeah, pretty cool. That's me just one-handing it. All right, one more magazine. And you know what? Let's, uh, let's try something out here. Let's go and uh, see what we can attach to this thing. We've got a Picatinny rail up here, but let's see if we can attach a suppressor. Let's go with the Uzi suppressor. Oh no, you can't. Oh no. Oh well, that's too bad. Uh, I'm gonna keep that right there. That's a little too bad. So that means I don't think you can put any bayonets on this thing. Let's go with the uh, spatula. See if the spatula works. Oh yeah, you cannot put a bayonet on this thing. That's uh, well, that's okay. That's fine. You know, some some things you can't have, which is uh, which is okay. I'm okay with that. All right, let's uh see if we can put a uh, reflex sight on this thing. Uh. Which one would be good for such a uh, weapon like this? Hmm. Something a little futuristic. Let's do the uh, sustenance reflex. Ooh. Okay. Just a little tiny reflex sight on there. <laughs> but uh, that's pretty much all you can put on here. Maybe some of these uh, new adapters. Oh wait, hold on. I uh, did spawn some, but uh, you know what? We'll go. We'll go to those later. But uh, yeah, all right. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, you could probably uh, wait. Hold on, just a second. Oh, got to adjust the headset here. You can probably use one of these uh, rail axis uh, tilts or extenders to like maybe put a bipod on this thing, you know, if you want. But uh, we'll I'll I'll do that on my own time. But yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of sad that you can't put a uh, suppressor on this thing. But again, eh, you know, you can't have everything. But now we have a Pancor jackhammer. Ooh. No other controls except for safety, so it's uh, left on the uh, touchpad joystick. Click down. 
Safe is on. The safety is on. Uh, yeah, there we go. Pancore jackhammer, which is pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to probably uh, mess around with that. See what I can, what I can make with that rail on top. But uh, cool. All right. Next up is the H and K C A W S or the Cause, which is a um, very unique looking shotgun. It is a shotgun. Uh, oh my goodness. I'm trying to remember if it was, uh, huh. no, no, no. I was thinking of something else, but yeah, this is the, um, uh, this is a prototype. I don't think this was ever made maybe, but, uh, Ooh, okay. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. I see. I see the dust cover is on the other side. It'd be cool if we could switch the, uh, the handedness of the, uh, the, uh, cause which stands for Close Assault Weapons System. Oh my goodness, I can't remember the uh, the uh, the uh, information, but uh, yeah, I think that's what it stands for. But I wish we could like switch the uh, size, because I'm left-handed. If you probably notice, I am left-handed, so, you know. I, I know it's probably a little impossible for Anton to do, to like make weapons, especially ones with like the uh, customizable uh, ejection ports, but I know that would be really cool if you could do that, right? But anyways, this one is this one is uh, for right-handed people. It comes in these uh, cute little box magazines. Ooh, this is a uh, unique kind of round. Oops, I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> Twelve gauge belted. Don't know the specifics of that, but it sounds pretty cool, futuristic. All right. So, let's go shoot out some of these uh, new, uh, new toys here. Let me uh, get it. Let me reset the target as well. And uh, you know what? Let us change the target. Let's uh, lower this as well. About head height. There we go. Ooh, nice little optic on there. Pretty cool. Let's go with the uh, drum mag first. All right, we'll chamber. Pull, like, uh, pull back the charging handle. Make sure the safety is off. Stick that on to uh, semi-automatic, I think. Ooh, we're empty. Let's do another uh, drum mag. And uh, let me see what the controls are. Down on the touchpad is to release the magazine, okay, but there is no uh, bolt release, so you have to manually pull the bolt back. And let's switch over to full auto. H and K with their their unique uh, <laughs> naming conventions for their uh, their uh, firing groups. Ooh, let's keep going. Let's keep going. I wonder, actually, if I can check this out and see if there are any other alternate uh, ammunition. Oops. All right, so 12-gauge belted. We've got uh, triple-aught buckshot, flechette, and slug. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me fill this held object there. That is the slug round. Oh, I always hate it when that happens. So this is a slug. Pretty good for sniping since you've got this uh, nice optic here. Okay, we're going to hit that B. Oh, no, I guess I'm a little too close. Let's go 30 meters. Put that on top like that. <laughs> All right, let's go. Uh, let's go snipe. It helps if I didn't put it in full auto <laughs> while I'm sniping. But whatever, that's pretty cool. All right, that is a pretty, pretty cool prototype weapon. Well, I don't know if it's. I need to read more into it, but I think this was a prototype. It was never released. Right. I may be wrong about that. 
But uh, yeah, it's it's one of them space gat looking things. Pretty much the uh, the sibling to the. Where is it? Where is the? Uh, where is it? The. The G11. Here we go. There you go. It's a little darker. And the, uh, the, I would say olive drab look of the uh, G11. But they've got the similar kind of form. Oh yeah, this is a beautiful looking gun. A lot easier to reload too. Let's try a drum magazine here. Just your standard box. Sorry, box magazine, drum magazine. <laughs> your box magazine. Oh, you know what? Well, hold on. Uh, I was going to show off the other one, but let me just do this first. Oh, let's uh, reset this to three meters. Since this is a shotgun, of course. Oh, pretty fast with that box magazine. All right. So let's move on to the next weapon here, which is a tactical version of the the cause. Basically, it removes the top sight, as you can see, moves the charging handle to the side instead of the top. And uh, oh yeah, adds lots of uh, stuff at the bottom. Uh, before we do anything, let me just see something here. Okay, that's pretty cool. So that means this can also take a suppressor. I'm gonna use the Uzi because it's big. It's gigantic. And, uh, I don't know, you can trick this out. Good for um, checking out the... You know what, let's do it now. Uh, we're going to check out these uh, new additions to the attachments here. You've got basically the G36 style uh, carry handle. You can stick onto uh, guns now. So you can take this and... Uh, yeah, there you go. Doesn't work as a carry handle. I don't think so, at least. Nope. But it's, you know, it's there. And you get you get two optics on this one. Magnified at the bottom and a red dot at the top. Or you can get... Uh, how do I remove this? There we go. A little magnified at the bottom. All right. That, the, the removal point is... Is on the optic itself it's not the carry handle so just got to remember that and your standard uh, iron sights which is pretty cool and I probably will have to oh hey well aperture flip up I'll probably have to redo my uh, my custom guns since we got some more new attachments all right, so uh, yeah, so we'll put a uh, let's put a what can I put on this thing? Um, let's see, what do we have? Oh, that you see the G thirty six carry handle scope on the bottom there. Let's put a, a ghost ghost sight on this thing. About right there would be nice. Let's put it to uh, times one magnification. Low powered uh, optic. All right. And, uh, oh, oh, you know what? You know what? Let's go crazy with this thing. Let's put a bipod on this. There we go. Oh, yeah. That's looking good. And uh, we'll put a. Uh, let's put the. Newly added, I think last last week, Tech 15. Oh yeah, oh yeah. There we go. We're gonna make this tactical, cool, all right. And you know what? Let's do a clash light on the side. Since I'm oh no, it'd be nice if there was a rail there. But uh, this, since this is configured for right-handed people, it's like when it rests on your body, the light's there. But since I'm left-handed, oh well, I don't have a body in the game, so I don't have to worry about that. So, all right, let's uh, put in a drum mag here. Get out of the way! Get out of the way! 
It's a bipod. <laughs> oh, did I uh, put the safety on? It's off. Okay, good. Oh, did I not charge the weapon? Okay. Being left-handed is not good. All right. Well, I mean, you get the idea, right? If I had a, if I had a taller platform, I could probably rest this thing on there. Uh, which I could probably use. This. Stack this up. Oh yeah, that's better. Okay, let's do this again one more time. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, here, there you go. That's the attack mod cause. You can basically add your attachments to it. Very fun. All right. And, uh, okay, let's, uh, let's save that one for later. We've got uh, two models here of a s single shot break action. So I think this one is the 20 gauge. Ah, uh, there we go. All right, let me just check. Yep, this is the 20 gauge. And uh, basically it's one barrel. <laughs> one shot. That's all you get. A lot of people have been asking for this. Uh, and oops. Yeah, I, guess, I mean, it's cool, you know? I'm not necessarily one of those people, but uh, I appreciate that Anton will listen to them and add uh, a very oft-requested firearm. So that's cool, you know? Again, I never really, uh, I'm not really one of the uh, people that ask for this. But it's a cool addition to the game. Very accurate. Very cool. But this is the 20 gauge. There's also a standard... Oh, let me scratch my ear for a minute. There's also a standard 12 gauge shotgun. So you guys with the uh, 12 gauge... Hold on just a second. Let's put this back in its spot. I like it up here. <laughs> so if you guys with the 12 gauge you know you like the 12 gauge because it's got all this stuff actually let me check out 20 gauge 20 gauge only has double lot buck dragon's breath freedom fetty and slug whereas the 12 gauge has well there's like two pages of good stuff there so oh, we'll just stick with the uh, double lot buck for right now Oh, yeah. I can see why a lot of people like this. <laughs> I mean, it's only one shot, but... You know, the act of, like, breaking open a shotgun, a break-action shotgun, is really satisfying. Oh, forgot to pull back the hammer. All right, one more. This time, there we go. Have to put a little, uh, have to put a little uh, spice on it, you know. Can't just limp wrist it. Oh, you can. <laughs> well, I don't know why the twenty gauge doesn't seem to do that. Oh, that's weird. I don't know. Maybe I was doing something wrong back then. But uh, yeah, there you go. The single shot break action shotgun. All right. Got this stuff. Let me just get rid of these. Oop, there we go. And let me get rid of these. Uh, these. Uh, oh, oops. That was my wall. I need to move back to the center of my play space. Okay. Finally, <clears throat> we have a uh, weapon for the scout. Now, I'm not much of a scout uh, player. I'm not much of a scout main. I usually go with engineer, but uh, you know, Anton, given the uh, scout. Scout uh, lovers, some uh, 
some new toy right here. Well, it's a new toy. Well, actually two. We'll get to this one in a minute. But this is the Duck Hunter. All right. Lever action, obviously. And I think it's, uh, oh man, I kind of, uh, kind of forgot what uh, this one was all about in the video. I think this is just a, yeah, it's pretty much just a scatter gun, but with a longer barrel and actual sights. Yeah, here we go. So it should be just like the scatter gun. Okay. Six, just like, uh, there we go. Oh, uh, I completely forgot. It's two shots. It's a double barrel lever action <laughs> revolving shotgun. <laughs> it's really absurd when you think about it. It's a double barrel lever action revolver shotgun. Okay, well, and I'm using it, uh, it's so funny, I'm using it like a pump action. Watch. Oh, wait. All right, so all I do is move my forward hand front and back, front to back, so back to front, so this hand right here, this hand holding this. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, I forgot, it's, uh, it's two shots. So basically this hand, oh, and I'm just pumping with this hand, just like a shotgun. A pump action shotgun. <laughs> All right, that's pretty cool. It is longer, and uh, I guess a lot more accurate since you got those sights on there, which we can't really see. You know what? Let's go back to the regular target here. Oop. Go. Let's do this one more time. You can get pretty fast with this stuff if you practice. Oh, well, yeah, you can also spin it. Let's do a little uh, gun spin in here. All right. But yeah, that's the Duck Hunter. And I'm not, I don't think you could put suppressors or accessories on this, so. But still, pretty cool. If you if you guys love the Scout, then you'll probably love that new weapon. Oh wait, hold on. Wait a minute. Now, I don't think I can do this here, but... Uh... Wait, wait, hold on. Alright. The Buckaroo, which is probably Buckshot. This is the Slugger, which is probably Slug Rounds. I completely forgot what Anton mentioned in the video. That's just me not remembering my... <laughs> whatever. The Blooper. What does the Blooper do? Got gray shells. Oh, it's a smoke grenade. Okay. Yeah, we're going to... Decrease some performance here with all these uh, smoke particles. The bleeder. What does the bleeder do? White shells. Huh. Are we actually... Uh... Ooh. Oh, yeah. No, we're hitting it. Okay. Really small pellets. And then Moonshot. I think I know what this is. This is the one I was trying to do earlier. Yep. Makes you jump. So. Ooh. A lot of force move with this one. <laughs> it moves you back quite a bit. But that's the, yeah, these are the uh, specialty rounds for um, the Duck Hunt or the Scout class now. Okay, well, that's the, yeah, like I said, that's the duck hunt. 
Now we've got ourselves the scout's unique grenade, which is... Ooh, Mount Thunder. Impact energy drink. Ah, why am I left-handed? There we go. Gun flavor. Very potent flavor, I imagine. I don't know what... Well, I, I kind of know what... Well, if you ever shot a gun in real life, you'll, you'll probably recognize the taste, which is not a good thing because... Uh, you're probably uh, inhaling those uh, those uh, particles and stuff, but uh, yeah, I think I know what that tastes like. All right, it's basically a grenade, and I think it. Uh, I forgot what the effect was. I think it speeds up saucies, which uh, is not well. You know, I mean, it, it's pretty cool. That's a that's a cool idea. So if you're uh, if your if your friends are a little slow in uh, Meat Fortress, then uh, you know you want to speed them along. You can use this. So it's not really an offensive grenade; it's like a defensive grenade, which is pretty cool. Nope. Okay. All right. That is some cool stuff right there. Good stuff. Okay, so what else did Anton change in the game? Well, like I said, he added these uh, cool new rails. This one always flips upside down for some reason. It's like that toast problem, right? Always lands uh, butter side down. Oh, no, it always just... Okay, now I see why. Because when you pick it up, it's always upside down. If you pick it up with a grab laser, it's always upside down. But if you pick it up just with your regular hand... Nope, it switches over. Yeah, that is a that is a weird kind of thing. Shouldn't be upside down. Well, yeah, I guess it makes more sense. Come on. Where's the grab point for this thing? Yeah, it should be more like that. See, the controller is like this. And uh, yeah, but uh, the new optics for the uh, or uh, stuff. If you want to make your abomination G thirty six M four. For example, there was one thing that Anton said he added, but I couldn't find it. And I mean, it's not it's not a separate uh, category yet, but um, he said that the M16A4 should spawn with its own little uh, carry handle uh, rear sight, right? Oh, this, <laughs> this thing's in the way, but it doesn't spawn with one. As far as I can see, there is no carry handle. It's owned with spoke carry handle sight, so... Yeah, he made one. He, he said he made one specifically for the uh, M16A4. And maybe... And are there any other... Uh, uh, I don't remember. But yeah, for that he made one. But it seems to not spawn, so I don't know where it is. It'll probably be fixed in a bug bug update, bug fix update later on. Uh, what else? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Completely forgot. Uh, Anton decided to color the, uh, the iron sights and the, uh, the suppressor to the flat desert earth. Some people love it. Some people hate it. He also uh, modified the original... Um, angled grip to match the colors, so that's pretty cool, and I don't know if he did any work on this, but I decided to spawn it anyways because, you know, it's just there. So basically, uh, now your Mark 18 Custom looks truly custom with these uh, nice, oh, I don't want to make the same mistake last time, this is the rear sight, okay? <laughs> this is the rear sight, no, this is the front sight. The front sight here, there we go. And then let's uh, put the uh, put that like that. All right. Do the C clamp grip, whatever it's called. I'm not too familiar with that. That's something new that everybody's doing nowadays. I'm still I'm still this <laughs> for some reason, but um, which is not good. I don't think it's I don't think that was no, well. I don't know, but uh, yeah, you know. So everything looks uh, appro appropriately colored. You get yourself... Why is my computer running so hot? 
Is it all this stuff? Oh my goodness. Uh, what was I talking about? Oh, so now you've got a, you know, nice matched color style for your Mark 18. Now, the only thing that I could say Anton should add are for the, uh, let's say, I mean, it's a very minor thing. I don't, no, no one really cares about, but for the rail covers, he should, well, he shouldn't. He sh no, I don't want to say he should. I sound entitled, but I, I would like to see some uh, rail covers in flat desert earth, you know? But again, that's not really, you know, that's not really important, okay? <laughs> Just, you know, these rail covers could be, uh, oh, here we go, could be colored to match, you know? But again, that's just a little thing that, you know, only I care about. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, you know, everything matches now. Even though they all, also the color was uh, adjusted, so it doesn't look as, um, I forgot what the original color was. It doesn't look as like orange as this. It's more lighter brown, sort of. I guess in the light it looks better. I don't know. I can't really see. Maybe I turn off the lights on the options here. Let me Let me check something. Uh, performance, uh, Loom is on. Oh, no, let's not turn on, uh, ambient occlusion. Just drop that in there. It's fine. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know what? There also, there was another option that I should have checked out. Let's go to work in progress. Okay, max hit decals. So, the default is 100. Anton added a uh, scale now, so you can have a 1,000 decals. So you can basically give me the, uh, does it have ammo in there? No. Okay. You know what? Let's spawn some ammo. Let's shoot up these walls. I don't know how this will uh, impact performance, but we should be able to Make this wall look like uh, a war zone just happened, and yeah, that's more than a hundred right there. I mean, this is uh, this is what buckshot, so that's a lot of rounds hitting that wall. And uh, did I not charge this? Oh, I didn't. Okay. Yeah, that looks. Uh, that looks properly damaged. So yeah, so now you can turn up your uh, hit decals if you want to. I don't think it uh, affects performance, at least on mine it didn't. But I, again, I can hear my computer from here, so <laughs> that's, a, that's a bad thing. Also, let me check one more thing, because I think I will end this video with the last thing that Anton said he fixed. Uh, Bloom, color corrections on. Okay, good. Now, for those of you who haven't really played uh, Worst World, who haven't finished it, this might be a spoiler, but, I mean, that, that mode is, like, years old, so. But if you beat the game... Oh, my goodness. Let me just get rid of all this stuff here. If you beat the game, you get a couple of weapons, like uh, the uh, Frontier Model B and the uh, Terminator 2 Lever Action Shotgun Skin. But you also get these, the old-timey spectacles. And these were broken for a long time. But Anton says he's fixed them, so. Oh, yeah. All right. Everything is now sepia-toned. Sort of like uh, Kurosawa mode in Ghost of Tsushima. No, I'm just kidding. It's not. Um, yeah, everything is now sepia-toned. So you could either role-play your, um, your old-timey Western fantasies with a appropriate color scheme. You know, you can load up... Uh, Hey, let's let's take one of these uh, break action single shots here. This is 20 gauge. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And then you can, you know, you can shoot some of them cow wieners. An old timey sepia goodness, which is cool because uh, if I if I remember correctly, I think the way it was broken was because um, some of the shaders were. Well, I don't know. Actually, it's been a long time since Anton explained why it was broken, but he fixed it. So now it's back. 
And uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just a little thing that uh, that uh, that's pretty cool, I guess. <laughs> you get from uh, playing uh, Worst World. Uh, there's no way to take it off. At least I don't think so. You have to reload the scene, which I will do. Yeah. Okay, we're back. Cool. But uh, I think that's about it. Let me check the patch notes here. New firearm, uh, Duck Hunter, rail adapter, G36. Uh, carry. Oh, added. See, it says added match carry handle sight to M16A4. Uh, it's not in here, so. Yeah. Well, it should be one of these days. It should come back in. But. Uh, <clears throat> Maybe, wait, hold on. Let me just try something. No. Are there are no other uh, M16s in here. Yeah, so yeah, that will that will probably be fixed later on. Uh, what else? Changes. EVO 3. Now. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, the EVO 3, uh, one of the users in the uh, subreddit, he owns the EVO 3. Lucky, lucky. Lucky person. Uh, and it's a submachine gun. I'm, 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 I'm being dumb. It's a submachine gun. All right. So he said uh, that uh, he or she, I don't know. They said that there is a mag release button for the uh, Evo 3. So now you can do that. You can release the mag with a touchpad down. So you can do more faster reloads. Oh. All right, put on a, uh, let's do the HK slap. Boom, there we go. Oh, yeah, I didn't spawn any extra ones. All right, what else is on the change log? Let's see. Uh, new status effect for Sosigs. Yeah, that's dealing with the uh, scout's new uh, grenade. Night iron sights are now, okay, yeah, th those are FDE tan, okay. Uh, replace models for angle foregrips. Okay. And I think that is it. I'm just checking out the patch notes there. Well, that's all the uh, major things to H3VR this week. Oh, no. Did I not do a HK slap? There we go. So, yeah, uh, you know, pretty cool. We got some cool new, uh, really cool shotguns, especially the, uh, the cause and the jackhammer. And then a single shot break action, which is actually pretty cool. And now that I think about it, now that I've actually used it, it's actually pretty cool. <laughs> I wasn't a believer, but now I am. I really should spawn lock these. I don't know why I keep... Oh, I forgot that this one also has a um, bolt release button, so... So basically, is it physical? Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I am seriously constantly amazed at how intricate uh, HDVR is, you know? Like, you don't even have to model the physical bolt release for this gun, yet you can do it. Like, come on, man. It's just incredible. It's an incredible... I mean, you could just press, like, what was it, left? Oh, nope. Up. It was up. You can press up to do it, like, in one hand. But man, you know, just that, that added detail. It is just impressive for a game to, to have that. Slap. Just slap it. Just slap it. Oh, that is nice. <laughs> and of course, the increased decals to like a thousand is pretty cool. Oh, no, I dropped it. Oh, that HK slap, dude. This is a really cool uh, submachine gun. 
but uh slap <laughs> uh yeah well i think that's all the changes so um I'm probably going to stop it here. That's about it for today. And I will see you guys later.